Hello, everybody. My name is Malik Jarrell Miller. I grew up like most kids with an inspiration to want to become something extraordinary. I remember it started off as wanting to become a penguin, you know, like waddle, waddle, waddle. Uh, <laughs> but then I found out that wasn't exactly possible. So I chose to, well, I want to be a lawyer, which was more realistic. But that dream changed as I got the chance to work at a law firm back in my hometown of Detroit. By the end of high school, forwarding into college, I learned that it was fine to not know what I exactly wanted to do yet, but entrepreneurship and whatever I wanted to do was my only goal, and that's what I wanted to decide upon. Now, throughout my journey of figuring out what I want for my life, came the bigger conversation of, well, what would that look like? And I will be so excited to speak this into existence until I began to hear the responses that came from it. Don't you think that's too much? You really think you're gonna do that? That sounds very selfish. Hearing people who I would encounter in my life saying these type of things to me would diminish me. And the crazy part is the impact of who and what they could mean in my life would determine the amount of power that response will have over me. And honestly, it would get to the point to where I would begin to believe that this is true. Now, when I was younger, I always knew I was different. From the way I would talk with others, the way I would interact, how, my, how I would decide to respond, how my mind would even think. It always made me feel like I was not the same. But finding that difference to be a great thing is what honestly changed my complete perspective. And the only instance in where I will find comfortability in me being me, different, and weird was through the dreams I will have. These dreams would allow me to feel like I could find peace in being myself and what I believe. And I learned that was how a dreamer was born throughout having that vision. And think about it, society trying to go ahead and take this away from me, having me battle the minds of others, was like them trying to take all the peace I had stored inside of myself. Now, back in my hometown of Detroit, we have a large community that has its own communities to hold. Any Detroit residents? <laughs> so, I wanna say where we are from, the streets echo with dreams from residents who have unique narratives in life all in one. However, these dreams were often faced with harsh realities that have to be faced by us, like economic struggles, limited opportunities, and overall just a constant struggle for a better life. And learning this came with understanding a lot of individual stories around me by the people I love. And these stories and situations were mixed with both resilience and times of struggle throughout these people. And being in an environment like Detroit, I was able to see the contrast of possibilities and limitations that certain circumstances were able to put on these individuals. And this harsh truth made me want to take a step back and think, not only for me, but for others who still believe. Now, the strong tape of our lives seem to never fail as we constantly stay stuck to it and the patterns it has to offer. A pattern like this can either propel us forward in life or keep us insured in what I like to call a relentless cycle. And in Detroit, it's a vivid image painted out through families much like mine that found themselves caught in a cycle where circumstances unfortunately dictated the trajectory of their lives. I want you to take a moment and consider this with me. Consider a family that has continuous economic struggle. Okay. Now, they have parents working tirelessly to make ends meet often just facing the setbacks of the natural forces to come with life. Now, picture a child being born into that exact situation, finding themselves into a situation just so unchangeable. So you see, the strong tape is not just a metaphor, no. It's a solid force that shapes, and, shapes the expectations that, and limitations that we inherit. And this cycle in society can come from various forms of different things, as I've already talked about. But, as we navigate through life and through all these different situations, we need to know that we still have what it takes to be able to break out that cycle. And understanding that even though this may have an attachment to us, we have the absolute power to detach that from us and unlock our true potential. And in other words, it's not about whose deck of cards is bigger, but how you play that deck you're dealt. Now, the question of the matter becomes, Malik, how do we even make this happen? What are you talking about? <laughs> Let me tell you. 
This will not be an easy task to complete. I do believe the first step is speaking about what you are aspiring for to exist. Knowing your true intent and understanding behind the challenges you have and your willingness to confront them. The second step is your work and effort. Words can only do and mean so much as we know in our lives, but the action behind those words is what makes them relevant and justifiable, right? The third step is consistency in the progress we make. Making sure it's not just a one-time commitment, no, but a daily commitment that will expand our vision. And the fourth step is our best friend. That's discipline and staying focused on the goals and visions we have for our dreams. Us being able to make the necessary changes and sacrifices that it takes to navigate closer to our achievement and the achievement we want. So no matter how you look at it, components like these and similar are foundational when it comes down to us creating the dreams that we have for ourselves. Now, a big myth with this is the matter of age. I can't express this enough, and if you guys want to, just go ahead and you can repeat it after me. Dreams do not, Dreams do not. Come, with come with an expiration date. They do not at all. Dreams and, es Dreams and aspirations do not come with an expiration date, but are timeless echoes of desires. Think about it. The success of your life don't just come from our youth, but a span of chapters throughout our lifetime. So I like to think about it just like a book. Whether you are in the early chapters of your story or exploring the possibilities in later ones, the narrator to decide what happens next is you, all of you. So no matter what could have been a roadblock before or a barricade before, it is never too late to rewrite the script of our lives. And now, as much of an individualized matter as this may seem, that is also not true. It's not just about personal satisfaction or achieving our individual goals. It's about the legacy that we leave behind us. As a first generation college student, I am leaving an impact on my family that is undeniable. I'm going to be the first to obtain a degree and be able to show my niece, nephews, and others who look just like me that there is another way. There is a way that sometimes, unfortunately, we don't get the chance to see. Some of us do, that's great, but just think about it. If you were in a situation like that where you just couldn't get that, and all you have to do is just go ahead and deal with the same trajectory. So the more I work on my dreams and aspirations and I work towards that, the more I can show to the generation that lives under me. Therefore, by deciding to dream big, we are infusing our legacy to strive and lead by the examples we set. So I just talked a lot about what it is I want you all to look at. So let me have you kind of get a nice glimpse of my dreams and aspirations. What exactly do I want? What are my dreams and aspirations? I want to be a millionaire. I want to be able to make sure I give back to the people who gave it all to me to be here right now. I want to be able to make my mom and dad proud. They're somewhere out there, I can't see them, but I love y'all. I want to be able to turn into that diamond that pressure seems to always create. I want to be able to make everybody who ever believed in me or whoever probably lost faith in me know that they made the right choices by sticking beside me. And if they did not have that inside of me, if they did not want to be able to keep that going, I want to show them that they were wrong. I want to be able to let any little boy or little girl know that everything is going to be fine. All they must do is continue to work, keep their heads up high, watch the blessings that they have and the blessings that they will receive coming from their work. I want to be able to help the younger version of Malik know that he will end up fitting the shoes he never thought he could wear. I want to be able to show that younger version of Malik that he is slowly making all of his dreams his reality. So, dreaming big and embracing your vision in a content society is vital. We have to be ourselves unapologetically, knowing that our visions have the power to shape not only just our destinies, but the ones who come after us. So after this speech, I really want you all to take a second and think about this. I'm giving you a challenge. I challenge you to embrace that daring vision you have for your life. Embrace whatever you thought would not be possible. Remember, like we talked about, speak it into existence, give action towards it, create consistency around that, and discipline yourself within. May your dreams continue to light 
a future filled with limitless possibilities. My name is Malik Jarrell Miller once again, and I absolutely appreciate you all for listening to me today, so thank you.